the reason that they left from Turkey was that the life in the camps was terrible. There was no food. And of course, there was no future for the children of the refugees. The children wanted to continue their education, high school, university, and so on. There is no possibility to do that inside Turkey. Practically, to stop the refugees in Turkey means to end their lives as people who can develop their personalities, their jobs, their education, and so on. I'm speaking with people who have described some horrible, horrible stories, and they don't talk a lot about that. Most of the people I've been talking to, they don't want to, to tell you what they have been through. They are very tough people. They have seen a lot of things. They have seen children being killed. They have seen people being tortured. Do you understand? Can you help her? What's happening with the war is very crucial. The war is escalating in Syria, and especially after the massacre in Paris, the French army is going with more bombing, or their discussion is uh, more bombing. This will increase the number of refugees living to save their lives. And at the same time, you have what's happening in Afghanistan. <laughs> The situation here is bad and it's going to get worse. Um, as winter sets in and the crossing becomes more perilous, um, the death rate will, will rise. Um, it's a completely avoidable situation that's obvious to everybody here. Um, and the main thing that people are calling for, both those who are crossing and those who are standing in solidarity with them, is for a safe and legal crossing. My name is Ahmed Abdi and I from originally Somalia. We are now in Athens, a Somalian community in Athens. Why I'm here is to help the children. We shouldn't have to wait for the United Nations to help. We can help ourselves. I have also children. So in Greece it's amazing the level of solidarity to refugees. Of course the Greek movement organized giving shelter to these people, giving food giving blankets, giving the possibility of moving in a more humane way. And this is what the government is not doing. It's an emergency facility and it started the 1st of October. They pass here people from Afghanistan 99%. Now we have around uh, 450 people, uh, sometimes we have 1,700. As we give them food, them clothes, one bag with stuff that they need in the beginning, one bag with stuff that they need for the journey. We have a medical center upstairs. They have passed around, till today, 5,000 people in about 45 days. Today, for example, there are around 100 children. Sometimes there are 500 children. Uh, individuals send here like food, like clothes, like everything, like medicine, like everything. They have passed from here around 15,000, 17,000 refugees. <laughs> Challenges is first to involve local people to what we are doing. It's very important that this place keep open, keeps open and uh, have the locals uh, coming here. They're each 21, we need to put more. The crates. The crates, not the... I originate from Thessaloniki, that is also a city of immigrants. 
and a city, a multicultural city. So my uh, grandfathers were all refugees coming from uh, um, <laughs> coming from Turkey and coming from Pontus. I've been working there since the first day that we opened the camp. The people of, of Lesbos gave the best example what we mean by opening the border and uh, organizing solidarity. The state is absent and the solidarity movement is there. People are sending their clothes, uh, blankets, uh, sleeping bags, uh, even food for the people who are organizing the solidarity. And a lot of them, they are outside the NGOs. At PICPA, we have all the vulnerable cases. That is, we have people who have survived uh, shipwrecks. We have sick people that need medical care and that cannot continue their journey. People with heart condition, people who have diabetes, people who are disabled. We have uh, elderly people, we have children who are suffering. Their parents have been lost in the sea and uh, we try to support them. We don't have the capacity to employ psychologists or doctors. So all of our people are volunteers and uh, we try to give them as much support. We have now about 100 to 140 people. It's not easy for us because we, we were never dealing with money, so it was all the time difficult to find the food, to find uh, the cleaning material, to find everything we needed. But the, ma the material thing, and the material needs for me is not so important as the, the idea of solidarity, the idea of participation. There's our box. Behind the lady's t-shirt, not left. The humanitarian situation here in terms of infrastructure is extremely limited. Um, there's a lot of people with, with loads of good intention here, but they're very under-resourced, particularly the independent grassroots groups, and they need direct practical solidarity and support. <laughs> This is a cooperation of several volunteering groups from all around the, the world, from Palestine, from uh, southern, southern Europe, northern Europe, Americans all around the world, individuals coming here out of their own initiative. And uh, this is the front line because we have the reception of the boats that come out of the sea and we try to provide the very basics like uh, medical first aid that bus over there is the the an international cooperative of many medics and paramedics and nurses hi 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 hello hello hi hi this facility is mainly used at the first point of entry to help the refugees as they come in with some medical needs. We saw six or seven weeks the first time that we came here that there wasn't anything on this side of the beach and therefore we decided to ask for this bus. We got the bus here and we helped the people as they came. We've had malnutrition, Cases. There's quite a few cases of women with babies, pregnancies where there's help needed. We have the kitchen just behind of me. We are providing something hot to, to keep them warm. As soon as they get out of the boats, some of them are in shock. Some others, they are just shivering because they're in the water for more than two or three hours. And some of the boats, they're so much overloaded that they're almost sinking as soon as they leave the opposite coast. So we provide tea and milk and uh, water and uh, a sandwich and croissant and for the babies and stuff like this. And that department over there, for the last two or three days, we, we are capable to provide everyone with dry clothes and jackets and shirts and blouses and blah, blah, blah. There is not anyone here from the Greek government, the, the UN, the... Nothing. There is, there is no one here from a, a central uh, institution or something. Everyone here is a, an individual, everyone here is volunteering. It's amazing uh, what the people from Lesbos organize themselves there. They organize uh, initiatives that go to the sea and they, they save the people even inside the sea.
But then they get them safely from the boat to the coast, which is a very dangerous thing to do. A lot of refugees lost their lives 10 meters from the shore. We spot the boat first and as soon as we see a boat arriving uh, we contact the other ones and we make sure there's a team on the beach to receive them. So we try to get the children and the women off the boat first and then uh, calmly wheel it in and get the men out and uh, then we take them to the beach, we calm them down, we give them water, we give them food, we give them blankets, we warm them up, we give them clothes. Medical help if needed. Today it's very crowded, yeah you can see it on the beach, we have a lot of boats already I think. Yeah. Thousands uh, of people, sure. I don't know. This morning already uh, early in the morning at 6 o'clock there were 300 people arriving and now we had some boats about 10 yeah. maybe and most of the times there are 50 people on one boat. When they're at the beach uh, they either get transported or they walk to one of the transit camps. Okay you guys you have to walk five kilometers yeah, it's okay. and there's a small tent okay. and wait there then we come with the car off the oh, oh we're first. <laughs> No, no, no. Yeah. This one, the smallest one in the car, and the pregnant women. Oh, oh. You can walk When the winter is coming, the wind is going to be very rough. So the sea is very rough, and the boats are going to collapse or the people are going to be soaking wet. Are you okay? Yes? Yes, good. Okay. 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 I've been here just a couple of days and I'll be staying for two and a half weeks. And I'm with the Swedish team and we're gonna get ourselves established here in Molivos uh, to provide clothes, food. We're having like a big food container coming down from Sweden. She doesn't speak and she doesn't eat. She's like, I don't know. Yeah, she's just staring. She hasn't said anything, she hasn't eaten anything, but she's dry, she just got new socks, <laughs> and she'll have more clothes soon. When winter starts, the crossing will become more perilous, um, and people will die. Um, there's a direct causality here. Um, this, this crossing could be safe if, if it were made safe, legal, and if people could cross in a dignified way. Um, this, this place is under-resourced in, in, in every sense of the word, you know, medical, infrastructural, etc. Um, and if there is not a response that really focuses on EU policy and the direct causality that it has with the over 21,000 people who have died in the sea and in the Mediterranean in the last 11 years, then more people will die. I think it's a big hypocrisy for Europe to say to the people from all over Europe who are working on the field who are rescuing people, good for you, and then sending them back to their country or having no plan of how these people will be treated. The Greek government, the left government, is now inside a diplomacy with the European Union and Turkey to stop the refugee, the, the refugees uh, entering Europe. They say we have to put hotspots, they call them detention centers really, where the refugees are to give their details. Of course they don't get asylum there. 
this is a way to, to control the refugees and to stop them. There are places where they are selected, the refugees versus uh, the migrants, and also the refugees themselves are not recognized all as refugees, and it is a scandal that uh, uh, people coming from Afghanistan, they are not recognized as refugees who have the right to apply for asylum. It's difficult to know where to start and uh, to answer that question without crying. Um, there are thousands of people here, it's difficult to estimate, I think at least 10,000. Well, there's 2,000 people coming here a day, um, mainly Afghan people. The Syrians are in a different area um, where they have san sanitation and shelter. We don't have... Um, yesterday there wasn't any running water here. Um, there's obviously no electricity, there's uh, many, many people sleeping outdoors. It's cold at night, there's rain coming. Um, people are in a, in a desperate situation. It's a terrible place, the registration camp in Moria, because uh, people have, can wait for 72 hours uh, outside in the cold. There is nothing there to, to cover them, and they should stay there with uh, blankets and stand all this uh, all this cold. Thousands of people are coming there and there are only 200 who are trying to register them. So it's 200 to sometimes with uh, 7,000 people who wait registration. So it's, it's a mess there. This tent was uh, erected um, about a week or two ago very ramshackle, it's not waterproof. Um, we've got volunteer doctors coming from um, all over the place, really, nurses, paramedics. We're trying to provide uh, this population with some health care. Here, here, here. Who's it? I'm not good. How old is he? Can I sell it, sir? Eight years. Eight years. This is an antihistamine with a dose yeah. there. So. <laughs> it will help. Make him better. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. This is from my medication. What's that? Yeah. 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 There we go. We're seeing, um, we have a problem in that we're seeing that the people that are coming, they're often young men, strong men. They're coming with coughs and colds, you can imagine. Uh, sleeping outdoors, we have a lot of flu. Uh, but we have a massive unmet need of women uh, and children who are in the tents, who f for lots of reasons don't feel empowered enough to come to us. Um, so we're also trying to do outreach to go and see people um, out there in their tents. Um, we're seeing all, all sorts of things. We've seen um, uh, cases of TB, uh, pneumonia. Um, there's women who've had um, sexual assault either here or on the way here who have pelvic inflammatory disease. There's no privacy indoors. Um, we're having lots of problems trying to help people. If we need to refer them, uh, we're facing obstructions. So at the moment, people, it's taking about a week because of the ferry strikes. Uh, so people are staying here outdoors uh, for up to a week. 
what, potentially longer. I met some people today who've been here for 20 days um, trying to get registration papers and so that they can leave here. This place is just going to become a mudslide. People, I haven't been here when it's been raining. Um, but it's just going to, it's clay, it's going to just become muddy. We're very worried that there's going to be an outbreak of dysentery, cholera, waterborne uh, diseases. We're going to try and build a trench around this um, medical tent so that if it rains, it's not going to get flooded. Obviously, we're, we're really worried about exposure, the risk of exposure. We're seeing women are giving birth here. We have very, very, very small babies. Um, as as medical professionals, we're really struggling with translators. We don't have any... Uh, we're using translators from the refugee community whilst they're waiting for their registration, which is really uh, heartening that they're, that they're helping us. The refugee process, it's an experience and it's not an identity. That, that everybody here has their history, their stories, their hopes and their dreams, and to recognize them with the dignity that they deserve. That they are survivors in every sense of the word. They are not victims, they're resilient, they are courageous, and we have so much to learn from them. Everyone who wants to help, donations are good, but donations are short-lived. What is long-lived is to try to change the policies of our country if we want to explain what happened in, in Paris. This is the continuation of the war that the European forces are continuing in Syria with the Americans, with the NATO and so on. So if we want to stop this massacre, we have to stop the war. And uh, the way that the European governments are treating the right for asylum is part of their war, unfortunately, in the Middle East and in Afghanistan. We have all these attacks in Paris, and I can understand how people feel when they have lost their beloved ones. And they cannot understand who are these people attacking them in their own country, being so relaxed and suddenly having to fear about going to a theater or a cinema and being bombed or losing their lives or the life of their beloved ones. Imagine living in a country like that. If they get to know these people, if they get to see these people, they are people who are going away exactly because of that. In the last year, 514 refugees lost their lives in the Aegean Sea. And this fence is responsible for that. People at home, particularly in our collective movements, really have to up our ante. If we're talking about solidarity, we have to embody that in a way that focuses both on policy and mobilization and really recognizing complicity, you know, that the deaths are on our hands, they're on our watch. Um, and if we talk about refugee solidarity and migrant justice and standing in solidarity with people as allies, you know, we have to take risks. We have to collectively organize to challenge the militarized and securitized borders of Europe, of Fortress Europe, and also organize very practical, immediate solidarity. The movement in Greece has a, a big duty to open the border of Europe, the border with Evros. There are two passages there. What we demand from the Greek government is to open the regular border and all these people are welcome. And also we're going to mobilize to bring down the fence. So on 23 and 24 of January 2016, we're going to have a national mobilization there. We're going to send a strong message. Bring down the fences, open the borders. Open the borders, open the borders, open the borders.
Now we don't talk about feelings or emotions. We talk about our families that we left in Syria behind us. They are serving, they are dying, they are facing the, the death every, every morning, every, every evening. So we wish one day we will stand together and make the world more peaceful.